Services Council on Aging Board meeting for Thursday, April 14, 2016. Mm -hmm. Now in session. Yeah. And being taken to report. Uh, public session, there is no one here or we've been informed anybody that wants to speak. So let's go right to the approval of the March 10th meeting uh, minutes. Do I hear a uh, motion to? A motion, please, motion. I'll second. I can check. Okay, are there any uh, questions or additions or problems with the meeting? Uh, nothing? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Uh, no staff report today. So we'll go right to the finances, FY16 budget. So everyone should have a copy of the uh, MNPS accounts. So um, currently with our city appropriation, um, and this again happens each year um, that in our uh, salaries because we have um, an obligation to our own budget to come up with the funding. So um, right now 15440 is what we owe um, and that will come out of our revolving accounts and our grants accounts um, and that's our budget. We have the city appropriation for a budget and then we have what we have to come up with which is from our rentals, our, our uh, gift shop fees, fees from classes, rentals, all of that. That's how we pay our portion of the budget. So that's what um, right now, you, typically in um, May, I start um, transferring funds to pay for our amount for salaries. And then we still have funds in our uh, OM account. Um, two of the major things that will happen is the um, beverage cooler in the coffee shop is going to have to be repaired again, and then also the uh, suppression system in the kitchen is going to have to be inspected that has to be done every year by by law so that those are two big uh, also did uh, Mark tell you about the screen the divider at the yes great room? yeah when, I was going to cover that at buildings oh. and grounds but since you mentioned it the uh, partition in the great room which is from floor to ceiling mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Bob went to shut that today for brown bag and it's not working so oh. a city electrician will come look at it and then you know it's going to have to be repaired um, considering that was put in in 2007 this is probably the second time something's happened to it the first time it was pulling from the ceiling um, you know it's a pretty heavy yeah. um, piece of uh, I'll call it a piece of equipment but um, that structure um, bent what was up in the ceiling so that was repaired that was that was couple of years after we opened so that was it and today with the motor that's two things that have happened to the partition I think if you talk with um, a lot of people like at UMass with the partitions with schools with the partitions partitions are a difficult thing to okay. maintain so that, that's expected yeah. Then. yeah and you know that one runs um, with electricity the one that we have in the um, activity room is smaller and you do that manually so we've had no problems with that um, so that's our budget so this ends as of June 30th and then FY 17 will start as of July 1st um, I haven't heard anything more about our city budget um, it's been pretty quiet on that front so it was submitted I had passed out a copy to everybody at one of the meetings and you know it's just a little wait and see I don't know who will be called before City Council um, to to speak to the budget because they usually have budget hearings but it, not every year is it everybody last year I didn't have to go so, um, I don't know what will happen so it is almost May and the budget needs to be submitted so hopefully I'll know more <laughs> Anyone have any questions on the budget? Why don't we move on to the director? So can I say what, oh. within the budget, as it has to do with finances, um, we're participating again through Elder Vision Inc., uh, our friends group, um, Valley Gives, um, which when Crystal was here, we had done that two different times. And Joanne is coordinating at, at this point, so I'm going to have Joanne 
um, just say a few words about Valley Gibbs. The Valley Gibbs fundraiser, or Valley Gibbs Day as they call it, is for nonprofit organizations to help raise funds. It's one day a year. They had had it previously in December, but they began to try it in the spring this year. And there are over a hundred agencies, businesses participating. And uh, what happens is for one day, people get online and go to um, valleygives.com or razoo.com and look up your organization. And our organization will be looked up two ways, Elder Vision Inc. and Northampton Senior Center, or Northampton Senior Center, I should say. So for folks who want to donate, you just put it, go to razoo.com, put in either one of those, and it will bring up our page, and then it, if you follow the screen, it will, you know, you have a donate button and so on and so forth, and you just go through the process and you can donate. And it's for a um, 24-hour period. And it can stay up for a year afterwards for fund, you know, for more funding, but that is the one big push for that day. And so spread the word for, to folks that uh, it's there. Spell it, Joanne Raz. R-A-Z-O-O -O dot C-O-M. And the funding that comes in through that <clears throat> previously was used for kick the tire campaign and um, now it goes into transportation we have a transportation account mm -hmm. so that's and what's the date on that again? may 3rd yes okay. Okay. okay any questions yeah. would it be better i mean rather than give direct i mean i know that i mean having participated in that before because they're prizes and blah 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 but um because they take a bit out of the chunk would it be better if we rather than giving you know on that day but just give it directly to you all so you get the whole amount of money is that a, or what do you, what do you yeah, prefer I, I think that we take any kind of funding in the middle person yeah, yeah, because they do take i don't know yeah. how much it's it's, it's a small percentage yeah, right? how much? Less than two. Is it like less than two? Are you sure? one and a half percent. Yeah, it's, right. not it's not much at all. It's negligible. It's, it's, but there, there are ways that we could set it up from what we've been told that it will, you know, if you give it, you can say add to it so it doesn't take the, like if you give $10, so mm -hmm. add the cut, so it'll be $10.60, let's say, or yeah. whatever. Okay. $10 That's and all? Because oh, I thought it was a bit more. So you can, you can do that where it doesn't. Okay. If, if you want to give the $10, you can say, just include the, okay. the discount, the cut, or whatever. Has anyone sort of written a letter or a template? So let's say I have a bunch of people that might be mm. interested on an email uh, list. Yeah. Is there maybe a template or something that I could, I mean, I'll, I'm, I could write it too. I'm just saying, is there something I could say about it just mm -hmm. so I could send it out like May 3rd because people mm -hmm. tend to do it maybe that day. Mm -hmm. and right. We won't. can put together a letter to do that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it would come from Elder Vision Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and it would say Friends Association of the Northampton oh, Senior down. Center. So yeah. oh. we could um, email you yeah. a copy, but it probably won't happen until next Tuesday. Okay. And, 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 and we can do it'd that. It'd be helpful to also have how, what people should do exactly because it can be a little complicated how to do that. Oh, okay. So you mean to get onto Razzle? Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, tell, tell people what to like, do because I think okay. a lot of people are well meaning, but it's not easy. Instructions. Help. Help us. Help me. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Great. Okay, any more questions? Uh, now we move on to the director of the court. So one of the big things being um, constructed at this point is the Health and Safety Fair, which is May 12th. I know you heard me talk about it previously. This is our 14th year. Um, so far, we've had 44 vendors sign up, which is pretty good for at this point in the game. Um, and no doubt that we'll have um, a waiting list because every year we do. Um, it's a well-attended fair, both by exhibitors, vendors, as well as um, participants. Um, and uh, the ads, we've gotten a lot of ads for that booklet that we put out, um, which lists ads, and there's a lot of helpful information in there because we want people to keep it as a resource um, for their use. So that, that's 
been going well, and um, we just on Wednesday, the day before, so the 11th, we'll be looking for people to um, help move everything in the lobby, except for the books has to get moved out, and then we have to set up all the tables. So when we talk about 66 vendors, we're talking about 66 tables, and sometimes double or triple the number of chairs for those tables. So. Um, and there's a few other tasks, so if you're not able to move tables, there's other things that you can do. And then Heather will be calling people or contacting people one way or the other for working that day of the um, event. Mm -hmm. So there's runners for the food, there's the kitchen um, assistants, there's the reception desk. I mean, it's just a very crowded building on, on the day of the health and safety fair. So if you haven't been to one, you should because it's pretty um, attractive. What day is that again? The 12th. 12th. Oh, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, May 12th. We're mm -hmm. helping so Wednesday if you like. So the, the fair for the public is 10 to 2. And then um, vendors actually can come in at about quarter after 7 to set up. Do you want me to get names again? Yes, Barbara usually sits at um, a table and corrals people to get names for uh, Florence Savings Bank. So it's very benefit. That's where we get that in the craft fair is where we get most of our, our um, sign-ups. Patty, will things be um, business as usual on Wednesday or no? The um, day before? The day before, some things will not be happening, um, but more so there's nothing else happening in the building on that day of the fair. So I'm thinking the gym. Will the gym be closed? The okay. gym will probably not be there. It will probably be down there. Oh, yeah. So um, I, I, I have to think about that. I mean, we pretty much said everything was going to be closed because what we get complaints about is because there's so many announcements that people get annoyed that yeah. their train of thought or their yeah. conversation is being interrupted. So that's one of the reasons we have no program. Um, but we'll put out the message about what's happening in the building, or I should say what's not happening. You know, the idea is to encourage people to come to the health and safety fair. But I can get back to people on that particular thing. Uh, so you know we're having the volunteer recognition dinner um, next Wednesday for all those volunteers from 2015 who put in 25 hours. Um, Seth Myers will be doing the catering. Mm -hmm. Uh, our entertainment is Suzanne Anderson. I think at this point we have 88 or 90 people coming. Um, and so I just want to state again that um, this uh, event is not through city appropriation. It is all from uh, fundraising. It's from however we bring money into the, the um, senior center. So it's, that's how that's paid for. And donations, so that as well as the um, door prizes. If anybody's interested in donating a door prize, we would welcome that. Um, and so if anybody hasn't responded yet as to what their meal is going to be, we need to know that by the end of today. So we can call in the numbers. And um, we're really hoping people do show up who sign up because we still have to pay for that meal. Um, and you know, it's, I'm going to say it's costly to do. But it's always a wonderful event. We honor the two highest uh, volunteer hours um, provided. Um, it, it's just very, it's a nice way for us to be able to say thank you to everyone because uh, we really survive on volunteers here. We wouldn't be able to do a lot of what we do if we didn't have volunteers. They are a good backbone for us. Um, just a report about the corned beef and cabbage luncheon uh, that was held March 19th. This was the second year that we did it. We used to do a pot of luck, um, which is people brought in items, and the participation was dwindling in that, so we switched it to a corned beef and cabbage dinner. Um, it wasn't as a fundraiser, it was just a, another program for people to participate in. I mean, it brought in seniors, but it brought in different ages as well as um, participants. Um, and I would like to give a special thank you to John Kaczynski and Barbara Kaczynski, mm -hmm. Paul Thiemann, Dan and Wade Pepin um, as part of the um, cooking crew because you know, it's a lot of work to do any of those meals. You know, look at the turkey dinner, but you know, John comes in the day before, if not two days before, to, um, in this case, pepper the beef. And so it's a lot of work. 
but it takes also a lot of other volunteers as well. So whoever is sitting here, thank you again for that. And there are many other people who provided door prizes or helped with the serving. And again, you know, we couldn't you know, do it ourselves without volunteers. So thank you all. Okay, we're having our open house during Older Americans Month, which is in May. And the um, open house, I know it's on the agenda, May 22nd. From 1 to 3, it'll be open to the public. We want to have um, class demonstrations. We want to have um, different uh, displays up. We'll have tours. We're going to have um, some entertainment. We'll have refreshments. And it would be a really good um, opportunity for the board to have a presence um, at that event. And we do um, get a lot of people in from the public. Uh, what, what is good is that a lot of them are new and they've never been in the building, which is what you need to have and sort of on a Sunday it's a safe time to come in because you don't have to worry that the place is going to be packed with programs and you might not get talked into anything mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's a nice time to be able to answer questions that are you know it's a low-key time for people but it's uh, usually an amazement when people who have never been in here walk in and are not sure that this is really a senior center because it's not what they imagined so okay, hopefully okay. you need volunteers for that to help out yeah we um, need volunteers to do tours we need volunteers uh, with the refreshments and there's just a lot of oddball things that okay. need to get done that day um, and let's see the fitness center oh i'm sorry Jim. i won't be here so you, i'll try to get somebody from my two classes to run that oh good yeah jim usually has it from his writing class and his photography class puts up um, some displays and they also are here to answer questions and that draws in, in individuals to join in the classes. So, yeah, it's good. Um, so the fitness center, um, the last arrangement was made yesterday um, for the company that's moving the equipment from the current fitness center down to the back as well as um, putting up all the other new equipment um, so that's happening on monday april 25th um, so that day the there will be no programs in the building pretty much the senior center is closed staff will still be here things i'm sure are still going to be happening at the front desk because people are going to come in needing a variety of services but basically we don't want people to be um, hindering the move because they're moving down this um, hallway and I you know for safety reasons we, we really can't have people um, darting out of a, a door or anything so the safest thing to do is not to have any programs and then I hope on Tuesday everything's back to normal and the fitness center would be open there and whatever happened previously in the back room will now be happening in the uh, new room and we need a name for that room so if anybody has any good ideas we'll take them we just we don't want to call it the old fitness center so <laughs> <laughs> we already have classroom we already have um, activity rooms great room. great room so we need something else the little room. <laughs> the little room. Yeah. So tranquility. Tranquility. Um, and then the furniture in the lobby also has to get moved out of the way um, so that there's a clear path for them to move the furniture, but not enough of the equipment. So I think, you know, it's, it's wonderful. So it's, we'll have a bigger fitness center and, and uh, go from there. How many new machines do you put in? We ordered seven new pieces of equipment, including a, um, a bench and weights. And there'll um, be a warm-up area back there, as well as an area for people to sit and change their shoes. And then the bathroom is in there, so people can also change in there. So there was, um, you know, th there's quite a bit to do to get that room ready for the new fitness center. All that furniture needs to come out. Bob wants to do the floor because it's probably the last time everything will be out of that room um, before that equipment puts in. Because the equipment isn't something you just decide, you know, I'm going to do spring cleaning today, so let's move the equipment out. So, so that I think is exciting to finally have that all in place. And you said and the 25th, right? April 25th. April 25th. And I'm just going to um, state again that, that all that equipment is from 
is being funded through our gift account, which are all um, contributions and gifts and donations, however you want to call it, made to um, the senior center. And so that's how that's being paid for. Um, I mentioned Older Americans Month is the month of May, and when you get your Constant Chronicle, which is an insert, um, this time in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, we have a lot of extra programs that are going to be happening for that, including the open house. Um, so look at that and see what you might want to participate in. But there will be a lot of additional um, programs for other Americans, which is something we try to celebrate every year. Um, starting in May, um, we're going to be trying the evening opening again on Wednesdays. So there will be programs in the building on Wednesdays, uh, and it offers a variety as well as some that programs that will happen every single Wednesday evening people can sign up for. Um, the fitness center, I haven't decided how that's going to be done because we would need somebody specifically down there for the fitness center. Mm -hmm. So um, previously, as you all may recall, we were open one evening a week. We tried it for a whole year. Um, you know, people put suggestions in the suggestion box and say they want the building to be open. And I totally agree. I think we should be open. You've heard me say this before. We should be open evenings and weekends um, to utilize what we can offer. Um, so we tried it for a year, and the participation never picked up. And um, you know, we had different classes. We had special uh, programming. Let's say somebody coming in to talk about financial um, assistance or um, how to handle your finances better as you retire things a lot of extra types of program um, and it, we, we stopped doing it I mean one of the things we have to look at is what we have for resources to be able to stay open mm -hmm. um, so, so we're going to try it again um, Heather's busy um, putting things together and as we come up with things because you know, people want to put on programs, and we'll just see how it goes um, to get people in here. Um, the largest percent, and this is funny because we talked about this this morning at the training that Emmett Schmarzo from um, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, it was about, um, you know, uh, when senior centers are open, and, you know, a lot of people still work, and uh, th that is absolutely true. A lot of people still work, but the majority of seniors, um, and I can speak to Northampton, are retired. Not everybody's retired. I mean, some people have retired three times, and they are a senior, but still working. So you know, I think we it, we always keep trying to, to do this and do that, and I think that's how you you know you have to stay fresh and you have to keep um, at it to see what's going to work. I mean, I'll just say the Tai Chi class that we you know I needed more people in the building near the end of the day, and so Tai Chi quarter three to quarter four. Some days there's nine people, we've had up to 20 or so, if not more in that class. So it's like, you know, you just keep playing around and figure out what, what you can do. But, you know, the, the building's here and what we can do is what we can do and we just keep trying. So, But there's still a lot of more conversation about um, programming. And, you know, I hear from a lot of the board members, but I do hear from, as well as staff, hear from, people who, who utilize the building as well. What are the hours that would be open on the Wednesday evening? What did we decide it was going to start at? 7 to 8. Yeah, 7 to 8. 30. So sometimes a lot of people don't want to come downtown at night. They right. want to drive they at night. night. They go home after after all back day. Out. They I don't know. want to come back no. out. Yeah. I mean, we can't do things. like 5 to 7 or 6. Is, yeah. I mean, to go home and come back out is... Yeah, it, it, it is. But so, I've heard both variations yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like to go home and have their dinner, yep. and then oh, that's when they want to go out. Yeah. So, yeah. And we can play with it. We can see how it goes and adjust as needed. But we've heard sort of both variations of yeah. that complaint about the evening, or at least I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So a couple things. Five to eight. Yeah. Well, Emma was saying shut down early one day, and then one night you open five to eight. So you the hours like you're kind of trading hours. Mm -hmm. so instead of doing it the same hours, and plus mm -hmm. five to eight, you shut down early one day. Um, so you, you can consider that, but we can do 
alter schedules around, like what we, when we have the evening, one, one staff person come in later and work longer. Um, mm -hmm. not, it would be the same number of hours, but come in later, right, and right. then you would leave. And that was working out really well. We also had a building monitor because of the number of people who could potentially be in the building or just for safety or whatever mm -hmm. we needed two people in the building to work. Um, so that that can work that way. We wouldn't have to pay overtime. Um, so it was one way that we looked at it. But I will say that if we close early every week for um, one day a week, we would get more negative um, comments about doing that. Again, because the majority of people are in the building during the day. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, I think we try to think about everybody. Um, so let's see if this this can work. And maybe one of the programs. Okay, we have a special. You know, some chefs coming in to do a cooking class, and so that class is um, 5:30 to 7. Um, and then the other classes start at seven, but you know, so we'll play around with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be participating in a program that's being sponsored by the Mass Association for Councils on Aging and uh, Keep Moving Walk Clubs. That on uh, June seventh, and you're all going to want to participate in this. <laughs> um, June seventh at nine o'clock, and it's called Go the Distance. And it's um, that all across Massachusetts, it's to have people walk at least one mile. So um, we're going to put together a, a walk on so. that date, June 7th, and hopefully people will want to participate mm -hmm. in it. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I know you can do it, and I hope I can do it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, for fun or just to be part of the whole say I walked a mile in Massachusetts on the you know in, in the month of June. Wait, you count all the miles um, I haven't picked out the route yet because I'll try to make sure that it's only a mile. Um, <laughs> I just, don't have to do a mile. I just yeah. did it. That's about a mile. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah I'll get on my pedometer. Because actually, walk it to find out. <laughs> I'll walk it to find out. <laughs> and it also depends on how tall you are. I'm a short person, so I, I'm walking right, twice right. as fast. Yeah. <laughs> <Tall person. laughs> I'm straight by pivot, so I'm getting twice the steps that anybody else does. <laughs> and then when the walk's over, um, we're going to come back here for light refreshments that have no calories whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Water. Um, so it'll be, fun. <laughs> it'll be fun to, to do that. So go the, the distance. Deep. Mark that down. Wait. Okay, that's that's pretty much what I have other than we have some other individual items on the agenda that I want to cover. Okay, uh, any questions on the Dorchester report? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll move on to building and grounds. Yeah, the, um, we're looking for a volunteer who wants to maintain all the flower beds um, here. We did have a really wonderful volunteer who left at the end of last year. Um, so we're looking for someone who would do that. We have a lot of perennials um, that really didn't get cut back yet, and um, so we're looking for a volunteer. So if you know anybody or you think this is something you'd like to do, um, but we have it in our newspaper to um, see if we can find somebody who would be willing to do that. Have you asked any landscapers? We have not. Because what I know down the Cape, we have a lot of areas, and they have a sign that says oh, yeah. maintained by. Uh, yeah. They can put their name on it, and they like it's free it. advertising. Yeah. And it's free advertising, and they like it. Can we do that? Couldn't do it no, on a van. That I. Um, I, I that gets, I that gets to, sticky with it. Yeah. I'll ask about that. Um, I don't know. I I'll find out. Those, I think, and maybe they don't even care. Maybe they'll just be nice and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, they, they they know, but they, I, I mean, who knows? But they just have a little plan. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, I'll check on it. You know, to be on the same yeah. side. But it's a good idea to find yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. there were um, tree cutters who who um, um, yeah. did all the trees up at Child's Park um, last year as volunteers. Yeah. Actually, depend on to do. 
Okay, so oh, you're, you're yelling. Okay, so that's where. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so other than that little freaky snowstorm that we had um, last week, uh, you know, the, Bob's got the lawnmower is ready to go, and um, the the lawnmower, uh, the uh, snow blowers put away. So. Um, okay. Yeah. So the signs a whole different section. So that's what I can say about the building. Um, I did put it in a work order for the break room. I don't know if you've been in there lately, but the um, tile is still cracked, and now the, 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 the concrete is really cracked and coming up in um, the corner over here as well. So but other than that, um, the building's in excellent shape. Thanks to all of our participants keeping it clean and paying attention to to what they should or shouldn't do. And you know, with Bob who really pays attention to the, the building. And I'll say the staff too, and everybody's very conscientious about um, how everything is. And that's why it looks like we opened just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Any questions on building and grounds? Mm -hmm. Let's move on to old business. Update on the sign out front. Yeah, so um, I talked to Louis Hasbrook, who was assisting me with the, the sign up front. Um, I passed around what the sign was gonna look like at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Mr. Hasbrook believes that I'll have a letter tomorrow. He's worked with planning. Um, and it was about the placement out there. So he's going to give me a plot plan where it can actually end up going. So I would imagine that within the next uh, couple of weeks, the sign will be out front. Um, and it will be rotating. It will say, um, you know, it's a message that will run across it. So we can put on something like Health and Safety Fair. Um, whatever we're going to be offering, it will be out there. So that's. That's good. And he also has a sign for the back of the building that says Washington Senior Center, 67 John Street. When is this supposed to happen? Well, hopefully happen? in the next couple of weeks. I'm waiting for the authorization to be able to do it. Um, and then the electrician needs to hook up the um, sign to the power in the building. And obviously the guy coming in um, to do the sign has to put it in. So there's a little... So it'll be done. And again, the sign is being paid through our gift account, um, which means that it comes from donations and contributions for um, a period of time. Okay, any questions on the sign? We want to update on the fitness center rule. I pretty much already um, yeah. talked about that. The only thing that won't be up yet will be the um, the ballet bars. Those have to be ordered through a different company because none of the um, vendors who uh, provided quotes, they don't deal with that kind of stuff. So that's why I had to actually go out to bid again because um, none of them could do that. So I had to do it without that as part of the quote. And um, in the bathroom back there, we're going to have hooks so people can hang their clothes up as they're they're um, changing. Maybe up to a seat that can pull down. Um, not in, no, yeah, not. It was going to be in those bathrooms, but uh, yeah, we can think about that. Mm -hmm. What Bob's talking about is a bench that pulls down um, from the wall because it can't be something that's permanently there because of ADA. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to have a the access for a wheelchair to do a full turn. But so, several women who were going to be using it said it would be nice if they had a place to sit down mm -hmm. instead of the toilet when they're mm -hmm. changing. Yeah. yeah. So that may be a fold down seat, right? Mm -hmm. Where, um, so I think that's pretty much everything for the fitness center. Um, I am going to not assume or imagine but I believe that there will be uh, a lot more members for the fitness center and we're actually going to be purchasing um, shirts for the two fitness center assistants that will say um, Northampton 
fitness center, whatever, Northampton Senior Services, I'm not sure. We're not sure about the color. We're not sure if it's polo or just a regular t-shirt. Mm -hmm. It's something that is visible to yeah. our members. Okay, any questions on that fitness center? I think you can probably skip the health and safety yep. fair. We've already gone over that. Mm -hmm. Senior services positions. Yep. So just a rundown of um, who's been hired with some of the positions that have been open, actually some of them since last um, October. Um, so two building monitors were hired, um, Melissa Lamprin and Mary Vesquez. Both of them have been um, provided um, an orientation and they actually have worked um, at one of the um, programs already. And the building monitors are <clears throat> in the building when there's a rental or a program they're responsible for the building while it's open. They um, are paid through, any of the building monitors are paid through the fees that we receive from um, rentals. So that's how that's paid. Um, again, that's not a city appropriation. Um, in the fitness center, um, and I did already mention this previously, but Robert Wallet, Wallet, excuse me, um, whose wife teaches our tap classes, he is the afternoon assistant in the fitness center. Um, and then we have Sean, who's been here since 2008, who does the morning shift. And each of them work um, usually two hours a day. And their job is to do the orientations with new members, as well as providing any instruction or answering questions while people are in there. Um, we really like people to know that they are not trainers and they are not um, in there to provide physical therapy needs or any type of need like that. Um, and fitness center assistants are paid through the membership fees to the fitness center and again it's not a city appropriation. Um, as of yesterday um, we now have a handyman. We haven't had one since Bill Hubbard retired in September. Um, and his name is William Lemire, who worked for the DPW for 42 years and retired last year and was um, an applicant and he applied on Monday. We interviewed him yesterday today. And I hired him uh, yesterday. Um, so, you know, we do get a lot of calls still for handyman services, so it would be nice to have this. Um, and I would say at this point, it's probably people are going to be calling to have the air conditioners put in, um, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that the handyman does. Um, just to review what the handyman can and cannot do, it's <clears throat> a, a job that would last only up to two hours, and anything beyond that's really a home repair type thing. So um, they would be referred to an electrician or a plumber um, or someone who, who would be yeah, able to do that. <laughs> yeah, they don't do cosmetic. They don't like, paint the house. They don't paint a room. Um, they can hang curtain rods. They can hang the curtains. But it isn't anything um, where it's to increase the aesthetics of the home. And it is a residence, it's not a business that can be um, using handyman services. It can't be someone who owns uh, rental units. It's, it, it's the senior's unit, but it's not like their tenants that um, the handyman would be doing uh, work on. Yes, and there is a fee, it's $20. Um, and I will say that that fee has been pretty much the same for a number of years. And you know, we every so often we'll call around to find out what um, other handy men, handy people are charging. Um, so twenty dollars compared to seventy-five dollars or ninety dollars an hour is good. So I, I'm very pleased to have him back. Um, and then we, um, you know, I, I have talked to the mayor about van drivers, but because the vans on. Um, I didn't really talk about the vans, did I? Um, maybe this would be a good time to do that. Um, the vans, so again, taking 
bit of time to get this done um, and uh, with what we need and who has. So I'm going to try to always refer to these now as mini buses. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the word. Um, so it's through MHQ. And I actually got this company from um, doing a email to many, many senior center directors. So I got a lot of information. Um, so with what, and, and this is on the state bid list. We can qualify, I've mentioned that before, with plenty of <coughs> So So um, one VN, and I'm just gonna say this is a tentative amount because we, I really need to ask some additional questions. The day that I got this, which is April 11th, the fellow that I'm working with is um, on, I'll, I shouldn't say vacation, he's out of the country until coming back um, next Tuesday. But about the kind of lift that it is, and then there's something that looks like it's doubled on here. Um, so with what he has already quoted, $65,249, which is we raised $65,000 for um, one of the minibuses. Um, we do have additional money in our gift account, and then any money um, from Razoo, uh, we would be covered. So it would be 249 times two for the two vans. The other um, minibus is being paid through capital improvements. So that is how one's paid, the other is from fundraising efforts um, for that. So I'll report more um, when uh, I can talk to uh, Brian again. So I think that's pretty exciting. It's, it's, it can be up to 14 passengers, two with wheelchairs, which would then bring it down to 12 seated passengers and then the two wheelchairs. So uh, I can pass this around if anybody wants to, to look at it. Um, also, I've been talking with Joy Winnie from the school department who does the transportation and so she's reviewed um, the documents as well because she is, that's her thing um, in the school department um, and she did actually recommend a different kind of a, a lift because it doesn't really tell you what kind of lift it is in the, um, in the quote because she has somebody who is uh, uh, trained to uh, provide uh, service on a particular type of lift which is a right con lift so we would want that and then RV and drivers can learn how to use the, the lift from um, from this fellow I don't know if I have his name but anyway so here's the minibus so um, so the sad part of the story is that you know we can order from and as Right. Uh, asked, he said, well, how soon do you want it? And I said, well, it took us a year to raise the money, a little over a year. And so, you know, we're really anxious to get, you know, our vans, we need transportation. So because these are retrofitted, um, it can take up to six months. So I'm just letting you know that. Um, so to get to the van drivers, the van drivers, nothing needs to be done with van drivers until we know that the vans are yeah, minibus drivers. Many buses are in place here. So that's kind of discouraging, but at least you know that there'll be um, two modes of accessibility for transportation. Patty, do you know, um, was the money from the two vans able to come back to the senior center? Um, so I did request, we sold our two vehicles. One was a Dodge Caravan. Um, that was donated to us in 2007. It already was, it was a 1999. Um, and then we had a Dodge Ram that um, had a lift in it. So both of those were put on, they were declared surplus and they were put on a, a list. Central Services did actually sell both of those. Um, so I requested that funding come back to us that could go into transportation. But that, because it goes into the general fund, mm -hmm and I hope I'm stating this right, we don't have access to that until um, it's declared surplus. So when that happens, I have it in a folder for whoever is the new director to make sure that they check on this so that you get the money um, for those vans. Um, the Dodge Caravan was 650 
and I want to say that the um, wheelchair accessible, it's in there? $2,100. Okay, so that's, that's what it is. So, you know, that's the, the other, the white van, the Ram, Dodge Ram van that had the lift, that actually was purchased in 1999, and it was through some capital improvements, but also Elder Vision Inc. raised um, the rest of that money for that van. But wouldn't the money go back to Elder Vision Inc. then? Is that money, the original money, going to the van? Well, the van was given to the council on aging. Okay. So, uh, so it, you know, it would, okay. But then, and then Elder Vision Inc. could say we want our money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can always give it back. Yeah. So anyway, that you know, hopefully that does come your way, and I don't see why it would. <coughs> so speaking of the new director, any is it out posted? Is there anybody that's happening? Uh, I I don't believe it's posted. Um, my last conversation last month with the mayor was that if he was putting together a, a committee and that <clears throat> it would get posted um, and from what I understood is that the person hopefully would start by July 1st. Um, it's not much time to train. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's not much time to train. But that's, that's, <laughs> class, that's, that's what I know. I have a meeting with the mayor actually right after this meeting so I don't know if there's something new. But people do, you know, ask me a lot of questions about, you know, who's on the committee and I you know, I don't I don't know that stuff. And I just know a number of people who um, are interested in applying and you know, they ask me questions or or they know somebody somebody knows somebody who wants to apply and so but I haven't seen a poster. Well the letter was sent from here, right? Yeah. Yep. And was it ever acknowledged? No. Oh, thanks. What a surprise. That's typical. Yes, though. John. Speaking of the new director, yeah. the letter you wrote and things like that. I attended Emmett's discussion earlier. Okay. He gave us a, a paper of the Executive Summary Council on Aging Boards. Mm -hmm. And for Council on Aging Boards, in Massachusetts, there's such a call responsibilities mm -hmm. and aging missions. And under Part A, self -govern governance, it says part of our responsibility is to recommend a director for hire. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that involves that we get the final list, mm -hmm. look at it and recommend. It also says approved by vote, her or his job description mm -hmm. in one of our board responsibilities. So just out there to the board right. asking to participate, yeah. see the list. It, we're not going beyond no, no. what we're required to do. And so we do cool. have a thing we should have a say. This is a mayoral appointment, and he can do whatever he wants right. with that. Whether so, we well, like it or not. I, I agree. And he's on notice from that letter but that we do want something. As a board, different. and what people do as a board, mm. generally, recommend director for hire. But not to at least have acknowledged the receipt of the letter in some way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We need to have like the mayor ask it, for yeah. some representative from this board yeah, to assist. Think and we haven't had that. Mm. I don't have some say. We should have some say. And more than just looking at a list of names, that won't do anything. And job description is very important. I can, I can tell you with the DNA board, we're, we're doing, uh, we're hiring like a director. And so we went through all the resumes and the mm -hmm. phone, whatever. The final two candidates are going in front of the board this next week. Mm -hmm. So the board can pick out the final two. Right. But myself and a couple others went through all the, so yep. there was a search committee. But the final two go in front of the board. Yep. And the board picks. That's how we're doing it. And as a board, you went yeah. through the individual applications? Myself and a couple of others went through all the resumes. As, and all board, the members. as board members. Yeah. 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 Well, a private, not a profit board, too. Well, if we also don't, it's not a mayor. It's not a mayor. It's, it's not the That's the big difference. Right. That's that's the big difference. We are appointed by the mayor, difference. and therefore uh, he mm -hmm. can determine which he, well, what course he wants us to be involved in. We have already asked to be more involved. I can write another, I can write another letter. That's to, all you can do. You know, but I don't think that's going to do a lot of good. And it may even, you know, take them off a little. <laughs> how, how, how are you appointed? I mean, what was the, did yeah. you meet with the board um, or? I um, went before a, um, a committee and I remember there were, there was somebody from human, Re 
resources, although it wasn't called human resources then, because this was back in 2001. Um, and there were people from the board. Mm -hmm. I remember Dottie Newman, Marilyn Stanley, mm -hmm. Mike Ahern, I believe you were on it. Mm -hmm. And there may have been somebody else, but um, yeah, that, and they were the ones who interviewed mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And then I had it, in, you know, they made the selection. Um, and I don't know how many people, you know, may have been you know, the finalists. Um, and then I um, was asked to meet with the mayor and the um, current director of the Council on Aging. And so I was interviewed again, and, and that's, that's how I was hired. I know the Arts Council, when we had, when Bob left, we did the same thing. I agree with you, John, but uh, we are at the mercy of the person who appointed us and will appoint the new director. Okay, excuse me, is there a union position? I can't remember. Yes. Okay, yeah. so you've got that to look at. Yeah, you've got to deal with it also. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Uh, Kathy, uh, Highland Valley Elder Well, uh, basically, we didn't have a meeting on, I was away, but it didn't occur because of the weather. Okay. <laughs> uh, one other thing, uh, as the review of the topic this year that I reasonably anticipate would be discussed. Jim, did you uh, want to speak on your proposal? The possibility of what you were talking to uh, us about earlier? Oh, um, yeah, I'll take on a project for a six-month project, and what I'd like to do is write up a detailed description of all the project, the programs that we offer here. We don't have a, a unique list of programs, and they're just, we got little bitty short blurbs. I'd like to set up a, a, a I can write them all, and they pay two, three pages a piece, so when people come and look at them, they can get that, and maybe give them, give them this package when they first come here, here's what we offer, and here's a detail list, and it will also help the volunteers at the very beginning, sitting at the desk, when somebody has a specific question about a program, they can go with it. And it'll have to be updated with new programs, blah, 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 and all that, but I'd like to be able to put that out there and have some little help maybe. We appreciate your volunteering. I did, I did, I will. Um, so something like that would be good for <clears throat> start well in the old other building we did this and it was kind of like a welcome packet um, and it had you know like what there was a brochure there was information about programs yeah. just some oddball things that would be in there about what is available to seniors in Northampton so we just recently started talking about doing that again to have you know so now we have my senior center so we, they sign up they could have you know the newspaper they could have um, the code of conduct they could have um, hmm. a, a variety of things in there and it's informational so yep. it's like you know because people will come in and say oh well, I you know knew I you know I'd like to be a member and so okay so here's sort of your welcome packet as well mm -hmm. um, to do yeah, I think Jim's uh, suggestion would go for the welcome yep. packet. yeah so now that'd be great to put all the programs with a real definite yeah description. well one of the, the driving force with people are asking me last week what about the wisdom project what is the wisdom project and the little bitty blurb that we have on the wisdom project really doesn't cover what we mm -hmm. talked about right. yeah i think that'd be great while i have everybody's attention uh, um kudos to heather um she got a New York Times best-selling author, number one on the best-selling list for almost 16 weeks, I think, to come here and give a presentation and a class for free. And all the people got here, and I think you had a whole bunch of folks that couldn't get in that were on a waiting yeah, list. And for her to pull that off is like, that's a nice. real feather in her cap. <laughs> Yeah. I really have to thank you because you introduced me to her. So <laughs> And she's the author of the month this month too. Yeah, so. so she'll be here Tuesday afternoon if you'd like to come over and reading chat and she has to be doing an office. But to get her involved gets a lot of the academic yeah. and the writing yeah. and the and the mm -hmm. I mean she's in charge of she runs uh, straw dogs and mm -hmm. 
so you'll have all those authors and poets and artists and mm -hmm. really cool. Things. No, it was wonderful, and she had a lot of nice things to say about us as well because she participates in programming, so it's kind of a nice, mm -hmm. just a nice person to get a compliment from mm -hmm. the senior center. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, she's in the chat. Yeah. Jack her, she mentioned it on her website too. Oh really? Yeah, so that 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 put the North Yet Senior Center out there to a lot of new, different people. Okay, so we can use all the publicity we can get. You've got it. And that's free. And uh, Betty has one more thing. Yeah, one more thing. Um, so I had talked about the that mini sale table that we have out there and getting um, some carts similar to what you see in the mall in the center where they get you know, buy calendars or perfumes or whatever. So I finally got a connection um, by calling because I couldn't find one anywhere um, and even some that you could buy online were uh, less than desirable. Um, so I made an arrangement with um, Holyoke Mall. We're going to purchase two of them from there. And so now I'm just trying to work on finding a moving company who can go pick them up. Um, to move them here. They're okay. not lightweight, so it's not like, okay, let's four of us go down and get it. Yeah, we can't throw them in the back of a pickup and no, bring them no, no, they're heavy. They're pretty, okay. uh, I, wow. I can pass this around, they're pretty big. Oh, yeah, they're, they're real cute. And they actually yeah. have to take the top off yeah. because yeah. they won't fit fire. through the doors. They have a fire. Yeah, yeah the, um, some of the pieces come apart. Oh, cool. So anyway, I, I'm talking to a, a moving company now. So anyway, it'll be nice if somebody volunteer to do it. Move. Yeah, somebody move. Movers that will volunteer to move. I suppose the charging us. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't approached that. I'm just waiting for you to call me back. I can get you. I can get your move. Okay. And I can tell them to do it. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Okay. So the, 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 um, the gear at the um, mall said that it need, somebody needs to have a forklift because of the weight of it, and there isn't a, um, a loading dock for it to come off of. So if you can check, otherwise we'll see what we can do. They're not, they're not brand new. They aren't brand new, but they're in very good condition, and there's actually a part that comes with it that we don't really need, so I'm sure. Um, oh, nice. It'll Maybe it can sell it on the Yeah, exactly. So, um, I don't know. You, I'm you have a phone call. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Let me know. So anyway, that's in the works, and and, and what's nice about him is that instead of having to dismantle the tables and take everything just off, like for health and safety fair, we can just wheel it to another location. Yeah. It'll look nice too. It will look much better in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, somebody needs to bring up. Well, how about a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Remember, our next meeting is changed. Yeah. It is always the second, but because we have the health and safety fair, we had to move it. So we moved it to the previous Thursday, but we had something there, so we had to move it to Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, May 11th? May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 11th, you're going to be here moving furniture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor of our journey? Uh, and by any uh, opposed? Never is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.